demons walk the realms in human or even no more halfling guys. It's one of the major but rarely suspected causes of a cornered person doing extraordinary things. It is time for a new lore video. <laughs> Welcome back, folks, to another Realms lore video. I am here with Ed Greenwood, the original creator of the Forgotten Realms. If you are enjoying these videos, please consider liking, subscribing, and turning on notifications so you can know when the next one comes out. And also, please consider going to patreon.com slash edgreenwood, where you can get tons of works in progress, uh, more exclusive Realms lore, and other great stuff, and the support from that Patreon is what allows us to continue making these videos here for you. So please enjoy. Eddie, anything you want to lead him in? I will bring you more lore. And here it is. <laughs> Binding Demons Nar Style. Compelling demons, as opposed to entering into packs with them, is a dangerous business. Most folk in the realms do it through the right arcane or divine spells, precisely and carefully worded. There are summoning spells that provide precarious and temporary control of demons, and there are banishments. And such work can be bolstered by the use of demon stones, and almost always involves magical circles or other drawn demon prisons augmented with runes of power. There's at least one other way of compelling demons. Its particulars little known today, but it was once popular enough that it anchored an entire human empire, and that is demon binding. Still practiced by a few Nar folk and others today. Demon binding requires resolve or strength of will and fearlessness, plus enough mental strength to literally multitask. That is, concentrating on three magical things at once, plus these specific elements. One, mastery of magical fire, its wielding and the means of its spell control by spells akin to walls of force, but specifically linked to flame. So a user of these spells can bend, twist and shape fire, force it in this direction or that and control its rate of flow. Two, access to demon blood, Ikor or demon-tainted blood, such as that of a cambion or other half-fiend, which is one reason some demon binders, like Jacantra Barrel, became cambions. Yes, a demon binder can use their own blood. Three, the knowledge of how to combine the fire control spells and the demon blood, so as to be able to ignite blood within a demon's veins and either cause it torment, or if it is a fire demon, like a Baylor, literally control its limbs and organs. Four, mastery of binding these powers over demons to a specific demon by obtaining its true name or a drop of its blood or some of its hair or skin or scales or secretions, including dung. Five, knowledge the names of specific demons and incantations to summon them. Six, a good working knowledge of and ability to speak abyssal. Seven, relevant detailed knowledge of the abyss and adjacent planes. Eight, detailed knowledge of demons and their reactions tells so the binder can sense demonic deceit. As referenced on page 39 of the Grand History of the Realms, in minus 1015 DR, the Nar chieftain Thyros sent his tribe into the Rildoth in search of better game and plants that could be farmed as opposed to foraging wild growth, and there discovered the ruins of Narathmalt, a city of Ilthir, a dawn ages and first flowering realm of dark elves that was destroyed after the descent of the drow. The Nars found many secrets of demonic lore in sealed chambers deep beneath its shattered towers and soon abandoned their gods to turn to venerating the demon lords and princes. And those demons answered their prayers and began to scheme as to how to use these mortals to expand their reach into Toro. One way in which Nars could become demon binders was to be tutored by a demon usually through a pact that enslaved the Nar for a set period of time, and then to have demonic contact, which could be sex with a demon, or by allowing an imp or a quasit to literally eat their way into the Nar's body, heal the entry wound, and abide within this host body for a month, 
draining it of some vitality, mingling the gnar and the imp or quasit blood thoroughly, and having continued mental contact throughout this time of symbiosis, during which the imp quasit could strongly influence the gnar by goading their emotions. By this contact, the gnar always gains the ability to speak abyssal, a very good sense of when a demon is deceiving and when it is withholding vital information, and deep and thorough lore about the abyss and adjacent planes. The Gnar may also go insane or lose much of their sanity and self-control and almost always experiences permanent mood and personality changes. This way to demon binding is still practiced to this day. A careful demon binder can survive long enough to become a local kingpin in the wilderlands controlling and dominating lesser creatures to patrol, forage, and guard a domain that enables the demon binder to enjoy a good life, though they will have to be addled or distracted indeed not to notice that the demons they seek to control are increasingly controlling them. A typical demonic aim is to recruit or gain influence over merchants and adventurers who travel widely so as to extend demonic surveillance and influence into subtle areas of the realms. Every demon sees their own silent army, network of spies, dupes, and purportedly loyal agents operating in Toro as their means of growing in personal power and by the right rituals enacted by mortals loyal to them, climbing the ranks of demonkind, literally becoming types of demons who have greater power and status. So a dredge can be reborn as a Rutterkin, Barlgura, or Belazal. Even stupid brute demons have innate cunning and a drive to gain more power, and they all consider humans and other sentient mortals of the realms as mere cattle to be used and easily duped by innately superior demon kind. Demon binders whose minds grow too weak, erratic, or shattered are often taken over by a demon they've bound or pacted with, so the demon controls two bodies at once. In rare instances, a mortal host may voluntarily agree to share their body with a demon, though the demon always intends to enslave or even mind kill such hosts over time. In this way, many demons walk the realms in human or even no more halfling guise. It's one of the major but rarely suspected causes of a cornered person doing extraordinary things to win a battle or outwit foes or escape alive. Behind many an ambitious and rising robber baron or petty city lord lurks a demon master. Prized demonic targets among mortals are those who have the magical talents physical means and mastery of process to craft magic items and infuse them with powers and sentience, as they can enable a demon to hide itself in a sword or other enchanted item and seek to control all future wielders of that item. Greater demons often master the mental tricks of possessing and controlling multiple bodies at once as opposed to putting one body into sleep, torpor, or stasis while they concentrate on living as another, and can simultaneously see and hear through several influenced or controlled mortals at once. Far more than the regimented devils, demons prefer subterfuge, hiding, and misdirection. They will by nature and habit seek to make mortals believe they're striving for one thing when their goal is another thing. Which is why a common saying among demons who have dealings with mortals is, show me trust and I'll show you a fool. Hmm, wonder how many demons are involved in politics or corporate battles or the stock market. It's almost as telling as one of Elminster's favorite sayings. Show me a wizard and I'll show you a reckless fool. Hmm, again, hmm. And that is all that we can find about binding demons, Nar style. Hi, welcome back to Realm Speak, and this time around we're doing this. And this is one, a name of a particular demon of which there are many, many pronunciations. Be because it's not easy for human tongues and throats to say this word, but usually humans 
These days, in the realms, settle on Fras Urblu. Fras Urblu. Again, it's not easy to say. So, you will hear variations. Fras Urblu. Fras Urblu. Fras Urblu. Because it's easier to jump on the closing syllable and give it some sort of emphasis. It makes it easier to say, but Faraz Urblu. So you gotta move your tongue around. If you have a tongue, it's Faraz Urblu. Your tongue is taking a little journey there.